what he's done for me. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good. How often? And all the time. Find somebody close to you. Look like they're glad to be in 2023 and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break our love in two. Amen. Y'all, we serve a good God. We serve an awesome Savior. And it is significant, significant in the fact that we're here on the first day of the new year, which just happens to be on the Lord's Day. And we decided, you know what, if God brought me through all of it, because how many of y'all would be honest and say it was sometimes you didn't think you was going to make it through 2020. <laughs> hey, we just be real about it. That was a couple times there in 2022 where it looked rough with some situations for you. But thanks be unto God that he brought you through those things you thought you were not able to handle. And now has you at the beginning of a brand new year. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful to God that he has brought us yet this far. Um, and if we're going to make it any further, we're going to need God to carry us on a little further. Amen. It's good to see those of you that are here um, on this morning. Um, as has already been said, we're thankful for those that came out um, on last night for our New Year's um, um, program. Um, and I wanted the chili cook off, you know, so. <laughs> Look, they mad, they mad, they mad, but you know what? I won. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is I won. You know, that's all that really matters. It's good to be here. It's good to be here with you all on this morning. We're thankful uh, for those of you that are watching with us via live stream on this morning. So glad to have you here in our midst um, on this morning as well. Um, Y'all ready for the word of the Lord? Yeah. Amen. I'm excited. Uh, I played that short video, but as has already been talked about, we're beginning. I'm going to check it. We'll put the slide up for us. Um, this month, we're going to begin um, a series of lessons that we're going to be looking at out of the book of James. We're going to be looking at the book of James, and the title of this is Faith and Works, is what we're going to be talking about. The of James faith and works um, and on today week one in our series we're going to be talking about testing and persevering all of us are going to experience some tests in our life amen uh, some say you'll experience multiple tests at the same time um, but you're going to experience tests in this life. And if you expect to be able to make it through the various tests and the various trials that we go through, you're going to have to have this thing that the scripture calls perseverance. If you expect to be able to make it through. So today we're going to begin this five week series through this New Testament book of James. And as many of you have probably read before, the book of James is well known for its emphasis and its teaching on both faith and works, which just happens to be the title of our series for this month. And the book of James is believed to be the earliest of all books of the New Testament. And it's after James was the half brother of Jesus. And he was a preacher, a leader and an elder of the church there in Jerusalem. And it is also significant to our series in the intense persecution and the adversity that the early church faced. And James is not writing as a disconnected observer, but rather as an active participant in the lessons of faith and perseverance that he encourages through this letter that he writes. And to give a historical background, James died around either A.D. 62 or A.D. 65. And his letter was written before his time. And there are some similarities between the themes in James's letters and the writings of Paul. And if you know James, he's the in your face, no holes barred kind of apostle. That's how that's how we'll put it. He says, in essence, that if you're going to be a Christian, be a real one. That's what he says. This book thus explains to us what practical Christianity looks like. It's about living out your faith in everyday situations with everyday people and doing it in a victorious way. 
James opens by talking about trials that affect every area of your life. He then exhorts his readers to stop whining and keep going on. Yeah, keep going on because there's a crowd that is waiting on you after you get through the trials that you are facing right now. Not only in heaven, but here on earth. And then James tackles um, discrimination in the church and tells God's people to stop honoring the wrong folk. Uh, some, for instance, had rewarded the rich and ignored the poor. Even as the ones were honoring were awaiting their day of reckoning and the ones they were ignoring were God's kingdom priority. And James quit living by earthly wisdom and he urges God's people to quit fighting and fussing with each other and to rather submit themselves to God and to the will of God. And James says that if God's people will get it right with God, they'll have the power to get it right with each other. So that is what we're talking about on this morning. James, as he is often described, James the just, as he was affectionately referred to, is a good preacher with an important message for the early church. Importantly, his message continues to be relevant as years go by. The persecution of the church carries on. And the experience of personal adversity is felt by every person that is alive in this world. So each week we're going to look at two big ideas from the book of James. And today we're going to dive into James chapter 1 and his teaching on testing and persevering. The testing of our faith through trials through adversity, through suffering, and other manners, produce in us a steadfast spirit and perseverance that helps us to make it through. So if you would be going with me in your Bibles to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, and as we had read verses 2 through 12, which was our passage for this morning. And our passage begins with an intentionally shocking statement. What does he say? Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. Now, y'all, I don't know about y'all, but it's hard to hear this and imagine that there can be joy in the midst of trials. That there can be joy in the midst of suffering, I can think of a lot of things right now that I can find joy in, and pain is not one of them. Suffering is not one of them. Destruction didn't make the list. Adversity did not make the list. And yet James here calls the early church to have joy in the midst of persecution. Also worth noting here is that James does not say if you experience trials, rather when you experience trials. Church, can I tell you, adversity is a foregone conclusion. Second Timothy chapter three and verse number 12 says, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. James said, if you want to follow Jesus, if you want to live the life of a child of God, you are going to experience some persecution a time or two in your life. Not might be persecuted, but will be persecuted. Church, and just because you and I aren't experiencing persecution like the early church did or like some of our brothers and sisters around the world currently are. We think that we've somehow looked out and we've been spared the trouble. Not at all. In fact, what James goes on to articulate in our passage is that we count our trials as joy. Not because we're uh, 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 acquainted with pain and we just like pain, but because we trust that the testing of our faith is producing in us something of value. Something so valuable that every believer needs to experience it in some form or another. 
the testing of our faith. James says that we will meet trials of various kinds. Y'all, this is an extremely important point to remember as the original meaning of various kinds literally means many colors. And when I was looking at that, my mind went and I thought about a crayon box. And I was just thinking about it as a child, maybe you got your first box of crayons and you was looking at, you just got excited about all the many colors that were in there and you can choose from the various colors. But just what, that's just what Satan's arsenal of things that he has and temptations and trials that he can use in your life. Satan is not limited to one thing he can bother you with. Satan is not limited to just one group of things that he can test you with. But Satan got a whole crayon box, y'all. He, he got a whole slew of things that he can test you with and that he can try you with. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, he'll be successful at that. So there are various kinds that it differs from person to person. Not only does it differ from person to person, it differs from culture to culture. It differs from church to church. It differs. And y'all, we're talking about things like relational pain. We're talking about things like, well, we don't like to talk about mental health and well-being. We're talking about physical disease and suffering. We're talking about financial loss. And then we're talking about external persecution. So the list could go on and on. But in fact, there are some people who are here today right now that you wouldn't even know it. But they are experiencing the greatest test of their faith than they've ever had before right now. And it causes them to ask questions like, is God even real? I know you've never been there, but for other folk, they'll say, you know, if God is so good, why does he allow evil? They'll say things like, why won't God intervene in my life? They'll, they'll say things like, why won't God heal my child, heal my spouse, heal my friend? These are the questions that you ask at some point in your faith walk with God. But the big question isn't, will I experience trials? But rather, when will I experience trials in my life? And the good news is that although there are various trials, more numerous than the colors found in a crayon box, that there's also a God in heaven who is weaving every trial, every color into something beautiful because we know that the scriptures already let us know that not some of these things are going to work together, but all of these things are going to work together for the good of them that love the Lord. So the trick is learning to trust him through the process. And that is called perseverance. Perseverance. Webster's Dictionary defines perseverance as persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. And for those who follow Jesus, what do you think achieving success really means? Or, or say it a different way, what would it look like to be a successful follower of Jesus Christ. James gives us some insight into that answer when he says, you know that the testing of faith produces steadfastness or perseverance. And let steadfastness or perseverance have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete Lacking in nothing. So success in Christ means trust in Christ through the various trials of life that he brings to us to be per perfect and in completion. Success for the believer is wholeness in Christ. And wholeness is found on the other side of suffering. 
there's something unique about suffering, about pain and adversity that produces character on the inside of God's children. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Paul says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So church, can I tell you something? Adversity calls us to go higher. Adversity calls us to be greater and to trust God to deeper depths and level. Suffering, if you hang around long enough, will expand your faith. Yeah, yeah. If you let it, it'll kill your faith. But on the other hand, it can strengthen your faith as well. Pain drives us into the arms of God. And as we learn over and over again to trust God through any and every situation, our capacity to hope expands in God. Our capacity to be faithful increases and we learn to persevere because of the promises that we have in Jesus. So what is the promise? As we grow in faith and as we learn to follow Christ, we must also learn to keep our eyes on him no matter how difficult nor impossible the circumstances might be. See, this is what we got to keep on our mind, church, that even though I'm going through, brother, I'm not alone. Even though I may be experiencing hardship in my family, I may be experiencing hardship on my job, I may be experiencing hardship in my finances, or whatever area of life it is, I'm dealing with this thing, but I'm not dealing with it by myself. And, and I know eventually, because are there any people in here that got a history with God? You, you've seen God do things in your life before? So, so here's the thing that if you're not careful you'll become so overwhelmed by what's in front of you that you'll forget the God that's behind you I say that again for those of you that are watching at home I say that we'll become so consumed by what's in front of us and by what we see that we forget the God that's backing us up and we forget the God that's on our side so it's a need for me to have perseverance in my life because I can't stop right here and I can't give up right here because I still got to give God an opportunity to do his work. I still got to give God an opportunity to show himself powerful. So that's why I got to persevere. What did Paul say? Paul said, you know what? I, I, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. You know, 2022, guess what? It's behind you now. You know, things that happen, we can't change it. We can't go back and do a do-over. It ain't like the game system. You can restart it or reboot it. You just got to keep your eyes focused on what's ahead of you. But for a lot of folk, that's easier said than done. Because every day you go about life, your adversary, the devil, is right there. You in the mirror trying to brush your teeth, he right there, uh-huh, I'm going to get you today. You downstairs trying to fix your pancakes and, and bacon and get ready for the day. And the devil just all up in your mind trying to get you all twisted and trying to get your mind off of Jesus. Children of God, we are going to have to have this thing that the scripture calls perseverance. We are going to have to have enough strength to just make it through because a lot of us got strength for overnight situations. You know, you know we got enough faith you know that if, if I fall on Tuesday, the longest God show up by Wednesday morning, I'll be alright, but you know, if you wait to Thursday and, and Friday, I don't think I'm going to be able to hold on. But some of y'all have lived long enough that you can say he may not come when you want him to come. 
But as Big Mama would say, he's always right on time. And that's why it's needful for you to have that thing called perseverance. What did the scripture tell us? He said, don't be weary in your well-doing. Why? For in due season. When is that going to be? I don't know, but it's due season. He said, for in due season, you shall reap if you don't do what? Grow weary. And if you don't faint. Y'all, y'all, we got to get out of this thing that that just because times get hard and I never understand this for the life of me, that people that know God, people that have a relationship with God and times get hard and they leave God. Times get hard and they stop being faithful. Times get hard and they stop praying. Times get hard and they stop trusting God like they need to. But let me tell you something. When times get hard, you need to be trying to get closer and closer to God. When when life for you has just been flipped upside down, you need to be trying to get closer to God. Because it is only by getting closer to him that you are able to hold on. And not faint and not grow weary because you know you can't do it by yourself. You need God's help because life is full of tests. Life is full of tests. And, and it's not like when you were a child and some of y'all have, were young enough back then to remember a time when you didn't have many channels on your TV, praise God. And at a certain time in the afternoon, there will be something that will come across the screen that will say, this is just a test from the national broadcast system. It was just a test, you know, and, you know, it didn't really mean anything. They were just testing you. And that's the kind of attitude that we got to have when we're going through stuff. You know, this thing ain't going to kill me. This thing ain't going to take me out. This thing is not going to destroy me. It is just a test. It is just a momentary something that God has placed in my view, that God has brought into my life. And understand that the test is not put there just to keep you busy. The test is not put there just so you can get some exercise. But rather, he says that this is going to produce something in us. What is it producing? Because this is not the last time I'm going to go through a test. This is not the last time I'm going to experience a trial. This is not the last time I'm going to find myself in dire straight. So apparently where I am now is going to produce something on the inside of me that's going to help me from where I'm headed to and from where I'm going. So the promise that he made us, y'all, as we grow in faith and as we grow in our knowledge of God, We got to consider that, you know, Paul said, I do not consider that I made it on my own. Paul said, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead of me. Paul said, I got to persevere. Paul said, I got to keep on going. I got to keep on pushing because there's something that is ahead of me. That's why you can't give up right now because you ain't made it to the fitness line just yet. And, and Paul didn't already let us know that there's a crown of life that is awaiting all of those that remain faithful. So guess what? I don't care who don't want to serve God in 2023. As for me and my house, guess what we're going to do? We're going to serve the Lord. I, I don't care who don't want to follow God in 2023. As for me, I'm going to follow God. I don't care who don't want to devote themselves to God. I'm going to devote myself to him because at the end of this thing, there's a prize. There's a crown that is awaiting those that persevere. What did he say? He that endureth until that, that takes perseverance. That takes you being able, as the old saying goes, to Take a licking and keep right on ticking. That that takes you as a child of God getting to a place to where you stop letting everything hurt your feelings. And, and you learn how to be like the duck in the lake 
and even though the duck can go under the water and splash all in the water, just somehow he's just as dry as he want to be because it rolls right on off of him. And some of us got to learn to let some stuff roll on off of us because, you know, even right now, we, we brought some stuff over in the 23, 23 with us because we don't want to let it go. Various trials, various persecutions, various suffering. But Paul says, in spite of all of that, you got to press on. You, you, got, you got to keep on going. You got to count it all joy, like James says. I like what the writer says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance that is also perseverance let us run that race that is set before us and while you're running what does he say looking unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is now seated at the right hand throne of God. So church, we got to throw off any weight and any burden that is hindering you from pursuing Christ. Is it that important? Is it that serious? Is it that important that you got to hold on to it and it causes a hindrance in your relationship and in your walk with God. We got to push on. We got to persevere. Th throw off the sins that are clinging to us in this life and run the race that has been set before us. And when you need help, I want you to think about these three specific encouragements that come from our James passage. Number one, if you need wisdom through the trial, just ask. Just ask. He said that you have not because you ask not. James says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously without reproach and it will be given unto him. I don't know about y'all, but in 2023, I need a little bit more wisdom. Yeah. Can I tell y'all something? I don't know everything. I, I, I'm far from knowing everything. It's a lot of stuff that I don't know. I, I, let me tell you, I, I'm open to learning a lot of stuff. And, and, and a lot of us got to become, because, you know, a lot of folks get to a place where you can't tell them that. And somebody told me something a long time ago, I'll never forget it. They said the most uneducated person in the world can teach somebody with a PhD something they don't know. If they listen to them. If they listen to them, they can teach them something they don't know. But y'all, we need more. We need wisdom to be more faithful Christians. We need wisdom to be better spouses. We need wisdom to be better parents. We need wisdom to be able to navigate ourselves through this thing that we call life. So number one, if you need wisdom while you're going through trials, while you're experiencing trials, ask. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Number two, don't let doubt take over the process. Doubt and faith cannot coexist. Doubt and faith cannot coexist. You can't be on one hand. I know God going to pay my bills. And then on the other hand, oh, oh they finna cut me off. I'm worried about this. I'm, I'm doubting. I don't know how. You can't be on one hand knowing and trusting that God is going to put food on your table. And then on the other hand, oh, I'm going to starve. I ain't, ain't going to have nothing I'm going to make. You cannot have faith and doubt at the same time. It's like oil and water, they don't mix. James puts it like this in James 1, 6 and 8. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven 
and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose, hear this, that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and a double-minded man is unstable. He don't know if he want to be over here or if he want to be over there. He don't know if he want to be up here or if he want to be down there. He's unstable in all of his way. And guess what? In 2023, God is just waiting for the children of God to stop being double-minded in some of our ways as well. God wants us to decide, are you going to be a Christian or not? Are you going to be faithful or not? Are you going to give yourself to me completely? Because you're not going to give me all of you. I don't want some of you. God is waiting on us to decide. Are we going to be for him? Or are we going to be for the world? So number two, don't let doubt take over the process. And number three, whatever you do, remain humble. Stay humble. Be careful not to think too little or too much of yourself. Be careful not to think too little or too much of yourself. God's love, God's grace, God's compassion, God's mercy is impartial. And I'm grateful for that. James 1, 9 through 11, he says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. And the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flowers fall and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. God is simply saying, don't ever get to a place to where you're too high that God can't do nothing with you. It's a saying that goes like this. It's some folk that are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. Think about that. Well, we get to a place to where we become so high minded that we are no longer no good to be used for the kingdom of God. I don't know about y'all, but I recognize at this moment that I'm but a wretch in the hands of God. I, I'm not perfect. I, I have not made God's big doer list. I did not make who's who of 2022 in the hollered halls of heaven. But in spite of all of my shortcomings, in spite of all of the tests that I did not even attempt to take, in spite of all the tests that I attempted and failed, he gave me another opportunity. He gave me another chance. And for you as well, because of some of y'all will be honest and say, because I know some of us in here, we like to think that we pass all our tests. Flying colors. Yeah, I made a hundred on that one. Yeah, I got a 99 on that one. Did better than I did last time, you know. I'm, I'm doing better than most folk, you know. Y'all, without God, we are nothing. Without God, we can do nothing. We cannot accomplish anything on our own. We need God's help. I can't make it through the test without God's help. I cannot hold on and hold out without God's help. So I need his continual presence in my life if I expect to make it through what I'm dealing with right now. So, so James, this morning, church, is encouraging us. Don't be surprised when you go through tests. Because, you know, a lot of us, maybe this ain't never been you, when you go through a test and you ask that, that question, why me? Yeah, I've asked that. Maybe you've never asked it, you know. Where you find yourself in those, oh, how did this happen? Why is this happening? James lets us know, as a child of God, you're going to fall into diverse temptations. 
And by him letting us know it's going to be diverse, meaning don't look for the same thing all the time. You're going to deal with different things in your life. Some things you're going to be able to handle a little bit better than others. But you're going to go through various types of things in your life. But no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it gets, you got to persevere. You got to find something on the inside of you, muster up enough faith, muster up enough strength to stand there and wait on God to bring about change in your life. You got to hold on and you got to hold out until God shows up and does what it is that you are asking for him to do. I said it earlier and it's worth repeating. Adversity in life challenges us to go higher. Adversity in life challenges us to be greater. And adversity in life challenges us to trust God like you've never trusted God before. If nothing else will make you trust God, let some adversity come your way. Let, let, let some trials come your way. Let, let some things that you were not looking for, some things that you were not expecting, let them come your way. And you'll find that very one that acted like they didn't know God all of a sudden. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. Because folk are act crazy, but they know who to call on. When they're going through trials, when they're going through tribulation. How do I know that I think about even Saul and Jesus? All of that wrong and all of that evil that he was doing. And when he was on the road to Damascus at that moment, he knew who Jesus was. Lord, Lord, I know who, I recognize who you are now. Let me tell you, you can be in the darkness. Glad to be in the darkness sometimes, a lot of folk. But you are going to come to a place to where you have to recognize the sovereign power of God. In your life, you're going to come to a place to where you have to recognize the fact that only God can bring me through. Only God can bring me out of what I am dealing with right now. So if you're here this morning. And you're not going through a test right now. It's probably because you just came out of one. And you probably just wiping the sweat off your by preaching those talking about it because I ain't looking for nothing else no time soon. But if, if you have not experienced one as of yet or going through one right now, as the saying would go, keep living. What it say? Keep waking up and saying good morning. And you are going to experience trials and tests in your life. But what don't kill you, it'll make you stronger. Thank God for the trials. James tells us to count it as joy because it's building, it's producing something on the inside of you that is more valuable than anything that you can imagine. Suffering church expands our faith and that drives us into the arms of the Father. So count it all joy. When you fall into various trials in life because they're producing something. And as our passage from James ends by saying in verse number 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast when while he's under trial. You got to remain steadfast even under trial for the scripture says, when he has stood the test, he will receive a crown of life. It's worth holding on, church. It's worth standing the test of time. It's worth holding on to the unchanging hands of God because after a while, there's a crown of life that you'll receive that'll never fade away. So as you're going through this upcoming week, I want you to think about the various trials that you are facing. 
the various trials that you have faced in life? What have you learned from them? What would you have done differently? How could you help somebody that's in a similar situation? Because can I tell you something? What you're going through ain't just for you. Somebody else is going to be going through something similar. And you got to be an encouragement to that person to help them. What they go. How do I know that? Because the scripture lets us know that when we get strong, what we got to do, we got to go back and strengthen our brethren. We got to go back and encourage somebody based off of the things that you have experienced in your life. So if you're here today and you find yourself in the midst of suffering, God is with you. God is on your side. And sometimes we feel like he's far away, but he's as close as he's ever been. He's right there. And remember, if you need wisdom, ask God for it. If you need it to exercise your faith and to stay humble through the process that we are going through here on today. I don't know about y'all, but I could use a little bit more of that wisdom. Because again, life is full of tests. Some that we're prepared for and some that we're not prepared for. Some that catch us off guard and some that, oh, I've been looking for you. I was ready for you to show up. You know, some days that are like that. But if we be honest as a Christian, we have some days that are good. And we have some days that are bad. Every day that we wake up and get up out of the bed, we have to make that decision. Am I going to do what God has called for me to do? Or am I going to follow Satan today? It's kind of like the cartoons. You remember the cartoons when they would have the little angel over here on one shoulder? And, you know, you had the, little, the demon over here with the forked tail uh, over here on the other side. And they would both be giving their little uh, opinions in the ear. And it would be up to that character to decide. And I don't know. It would be like sometimes the devil would be the only one there. And they would, they would show another scene where the angel was still in traffic or something. He was... He was still trying to get there, but for, for some reason or another, the demon got there a little bit quicker than he did. Just as God is present in your life, Satan is present in you. He ain't going nowhere. The scripture says that he's going to and fro. He, he's going through that crayon box that I talked about. The color yellow didn't too much bother you. Let me get you with this black crayon. Let me see what it's going to do with you. If that one didn't bother you today, I'm sure I got something else in here that's going to get you. And what he's going to do is he's going to throw everything but in the kitchen sink at you. He's going to keep throwing, keep dishing stuff out at you until he gets you where he wants you. That's why we got to have some endurance. We got to have that thing that we're talking about this morning called perseverance because if you don't have it you'll give up before God even shows up you'll give up before God even has a time to show up and do what it is that he has the power to do so this morning let us come to a place to where we trust God enough to know that even though I may have to go through this test a little bit longer than I want to at the end, God is going to bring me to where I need to be. And I got to trust him. That, that's the trick. That's the trick because a, a lot of us don't trust God for real, for real, for real, for real. How, how do I know that? Because even when we pray and we kind of like, you know. Nah. You know, even the way we talk to God sometimes. You know we ain't serious for real, for real. <laughs> Coming, you know, you pray and you know, James had already told you, don't come doubting. Here we come now, Lord. They can't even look up now, Lord. You know what I'm going through. Woe is me. Lord, you, you know what I'm experiencing right now, and 
I just need you to show it. Does it sound like confidence is in there anywhere? Does it sound like that person has any kind of, you know, trust that God is going to do anything? No. Even the way you talk to God. See, when you talk to God, you got to come talking like you know that you're his child. And, and not that you're guessing that he's able, but you're convicted that he's able. Because of what he's already done in your life. I'm convicted that you're able because you brought me through the last test that I had to go through. And, and I'm not going to go through this thing doubting, but I'm going to walk through this test with faith because I know if you did it before, he can do it again. Any of y'all know God to be a repeat offender that he'll do <laughs> things over in your life? Over and over again, new mercies we see every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. And he's waiting on you today to come to a place to where even though you can't trace him, you trust him. E even though I don't see nothing going on, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. And elder, even when I get to the end of my rope, I'm going to tie a knot, and I'm going to keep on holding on. Because I know somewhere in my holding on, God going to show up. And when he shows up, he's going to make the difference in my life. Don't be weary in your well-doing. Some of y'all in here been praying for your child for a long time. Don't grow weary. Keep praying. Some of y'all been praying for your spouses, for other loved ones for a long time. Don't give up now. Keep praying. Keep on praying until you get the answer that you're looking for. How many of us here this morning know that, you know, life is going to be full of tests? We're going to go through trials. We're going to experience various different difficulties in life. But it's one thing to go through that on your own. It's another thing to go through it with God on your side. And I don't know about y'all, but I need God to be able to make it through life, life circumstances, the various trials and temptations that we're going through. Because at the end of this thing, God is producing something on the inside of me that right now I cannot even imagine. Who is it here on this morning that finds yourself even right now going through a test? You said, preacher, I thought I left it in last year, but last year wanted to come with me. And I woke up this morning going through tests. I, 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 I got up this morning still experiencing trials. And I know by the time I get out of church, somebody done called me and they about to give me some information that's going to cause me to go into another trial. And by the time I get home and deal with this and deal with that, I'm going to hear some more news that's going to bring trouble and strife into my life. And it's kind of like just a revolving door. One trial goes out, another trial comes in. One situation goes out, another situation goes in. So that's why we got to be careful. You know, because I, I, I undoubtedly there were some of us going into the new year. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, I want to be a strong Christian. Lord, I, I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. <laughs> Not knowing that in order for any of that to happen, you got to experience tests. You got to experience trial. You got to go through things in order for that to happen. So count it all joy when you're going through that. And if you're here this morning and you're going through tests, you're going through trials, you have that opportunity this morning to request the prayers of the church. And we'll be glad to pray for you on this morning. Because guess what? You ain't going to make it through without prayer. You're not going to make it through tests, trials, tribulations, snares, adversity. You're not going to make it through any of that without having some type of prayer life. If you're here on this morning, 
or even watching us at this time, and you're not a child of God, you're not a member of the Lord's church, and you are here on the first Sunday of the new year, what better time to say yes to Jesus and no to the world? What better time to say, you know what? I tried everything that I know to try and it did not work. Let me give Jesus a try. And some of us can tell you, we tried it, man. He all right. Yeah. The man is all right with me. He's all right. So if you're here this morning and you have not yet tried Jesus for yourself, why won't you give Jesus a try? He's standing even on this first Sunday of the year of our Lord, 2023, and he's knocking at the door of your heart. Come, open the door. And let me come in and make a difference in your life. If you're here this morning and you desire salvation, you've heard the word of God. The question is now, do you believe what it is that you have heard? Are you willing now to repent of your sins and confess Christ as your savior and be baptized for the remission of your sins? And the Lord will add you to his body, praising God, having favor with all the people. The Lord adds to the church daily such as should be saved. So if you're here at this time and you stand in the need of prayer, or if you're here at this time and you stand in need of salvation, don't put off today for what you plan on doing at another time. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while you have this opportunity, why won't you stand and come to Jesus now as we together stand and sing the song of invitation. Oh, gentle Savior, While on others thou art calling, do not, and we're calling you, oh sweet Savior. My humble pride. Why on others I are called. 